What is up, everybody? Welcome to episode two of our course of study in vertex operator algebras. Today, we are discussing Lie algebras and some important associated concepts. We begin with the brackets that define the algebras. To that end, let's begin with a vector space G. In what follows, I'll typically refer to Lie algebras as G. And following tradition, I'm trying my best here to write it as a lowercase fraktur G. On G, let's define the Lie bracket. The Lie bracket is a sort of multiplication. It's a bilinear map from G to itself that satisfies two conditions. First, it's alternating, which is to say that the bracket of any item in G with itself vanishes. Second, when considering brackets of brackets, the Lie bracket must satisfy the so-called Jacobi identity, which you derive at from the first term by cyclic permutations. A vector space equipped with a Lie bracket is called a Lie algebra. Evidently, Lie algebras are not associative algebras. As you might expect, we can also talk about Lie's subalgebras. If H, that's my attempt at fracture H, by the way, is a linear subspace of G closed under the bracket, then it's a Lie subalgebra. Basically, all the definitions we discussed yesterday carry over exactly as you'd expect. One important callout is that we call a Lie algebra abelian if everything commutes. These are dastardly simple beasts that often give rise to enormous complications, well, at least in a physical setting. Electromagnetism is described by an abelian Lie algebra. Much more on that much later. Just like a plane algebra, a Lie algebra can also have endomorphisms and derivations. Indeed, let's talk about a special kind of endomorphism, a natural one on G that's parametrized by G itself. For each member of G, say X, define a map add X, where add X, well, takes the Lie bracket of something with X. From a different perspective, it's like taking the Lie bracket as a bilinear operation and making it into an endomorphism. Extending from that perspective a bit, we can think of add as a Lie algebra homomorphism from G to the linear endomorphisms of G. Framed this way, the map add is called the adjoint map. Now, I'm going to follow some of the argumentation in FLM here. If the alternating property of the Lie bracket can be considered as demanding anti-symmetry, which is true if the underlying field has characteristic not equal to two, which is certainly true for every case we're considering, then we can reinterpret the Jacobi identity as the condition that add x be a derivation of g for all x in g. We now turn to a slightly more concrete example of a Lie algebra, which also demonstrates a tight relationship between derivations and commutators. Let A be any old associative algebra. The commutator, or anti-symmetrized product, forms a Lie bracket on A. Thus, A with the commutator forms a Lie algebra, which you can readily verify as an exercise. We now turn to a subtle but useful relationship between commutators and derivations. Let A be the endomorphisms of some non-associative algebra B. B might well be a Lie algebra, for example. As FLM points out, the derivations of B form a Lie subalgebra of A, which is to say the commutator of two derivations is, in fact, a derivation, which you might have already explored thoroughly in the exercise above. And that's our show. Next time, we'll investigate further structure on algebras, like their quotients and extensions.